Fans are sad. This is not this is not something that helps boxing. This is not something that uh, fans want, but it's all out there in the open. Fans know about it. Dan Goosen owns Andre Ward. He owns the services of Andre Ward until 2016. Andre Ward has yet again lost in the courtroom three straight times involving an issue or issues with his contract with Dan Goosen, Goosen to the promotions. So ask yourself this. This is not some old Supreme Court type case or nothing, but what this is is somebody's wrong and somebody's clearly wrong and someone is trying to use, trying to find any way, shape or form to get out of the contract. And that looks like it's Andre Ward because when I think, and I use my common sense and I think like, why he keep losing in court? You know, why won't he just fight? Now, when you go look at uh, older interviews, older interviews, excuse me, uh, of Andre Ward, what you see is that he's talking like that, that uh, B-level Floyd Mayweather talk. And I'm not saying he's B-level, but I'm saying he's talking that talk. And despite the injury, the man has only had two fights since 2011. So when you're asking yourself, Whose fault is that, that he's not fighting? Because remember, he's taken his promoter to court three times. So how can you go, how can you coexist at a press conference, at the weigh-in, at negotiations, with a man that you're suing, or a man that you're saying like, yo, I don't want to be in this contract, you saw me to some bullshit. Now, first, the, the, the first, I researched it uh, extensively before. The one issue was that Andre Ward, when, when Andre Ward was injured, for some reason when he was injured, he thought that those months were, count, were, were, were going off of his contract. So basically, he injured for eight months, you know, and he's got, and he's got a one-year contract. I'm just using numbers, uh, arbitrary. He's got a one-year contract. He think like, oh, four months, I'm out of here. You know, I was injured for eight months, so four more months I get a new contract. No, the judge ruled that, yo, I believe it was 16 months. I'm like, yo, you owe him those 16 months. Like, it's not, nah, those don't count towards your contract. You know, and people saying, how did he get stuck in this, what, 10 year contract? I forgot, but it was a big number. No, he didn't get stuck in that. You know, you have, I'm not, I'm not going to go into the name, but you have to look at his legal team. You have to look at his legal team, and if you don't know what his legal team is, you have to think to yourself, well, stop doing the fucking videos. Your fucking, your, your boxer is going through some shit. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live. Subscribe and talk about boxing. If you want, there's actually an article, um, link right below, Real Combat Media, website I'm now associated with. The article and the details are right below. It's just frustrating because everything's all out there in the open. This is a year 2014 has been very active in boxing, one of the most active years in the history of boxing, if I'm correct. Because if you look at March pay-per-view, April pay-per-view, May pay-per-view, June pay-per-view, July pay-per-view. You see what I'm saying? That's five months. And then you think like, all oh, these pound for pound guys have been fighting. Number one, number two, number three, number four. Oh wait, wait. Not your number two. My number two. My number two was, was Timothy Bradley at the time. That was Manny Emmanuel Deborah Drain Pacquiao. But you see all these fighters fighting and no Andre Ward and he's healthy. But who do you really blame? I see a lot of comments saying, man, these promoters are juicing these fighters out of their money. And these promoters, you know, are not marketing their fighters right. You know, I believe that was one of Andre Ward's main issues. But I can't stop looking at the fact that you sued this. Like, you've been trying, you've been suing this, man. So how can y'all negotiate? You know, especially now, 
I think Andre Ward needs to give up because he's about to get swept. He's lost three times. He's 0-3. And, and the judge even acknowledged, like, listen, I understand you keep doing this. Stop doing this. And I'm just paraphrasing. Like, yo, just fight your fights. He needs to just go to Dan Goosen. And, and that's probably where pride kicks in, you know. But remember, any opinion that you follow should be the opinion of your own. Quote, unquote. So... Him and, him and his legal team need to go to Dan Goosen and say, listen, it's over. All right, we got to fight. I don't care who we fight. You know, like, let's mend these fences right now. We got two years together. You know, we got to get this shit popping. Andre Ward will be 31 years old in February 2015. This is his prime. He needs to be out there fighting. When you got so many big fights out there, but yet they're not big fights because, because, because Andre Ward doesn't have too much of a following. And why? Because of inactivity. Every time his name gets hot, what happens? He pops up out of nowhere. It's like, where you been, dog? Fighting Edwin Rodriguez. You know, you fight Chad Dawson in, in a 168 fight with two more pounds. You could have been a light heavyweight champion. Plenty of fights. Look, look what's going on. Look what's going on in a 160. No, we're not even going to count 160. We're going to take, we're not even talking about Glovkin. Look what's going on in the 168 and the 175 pound division. You got Anthony Thorell, George Groves, rematch with Carl Frotz, and I'm just throwing just a few names out there. You know, he's got to get his shit together. I'm not blaming Goosen. You know, from what I've researched, I can't, you know, the man's losing it three times. You know, three times. All that legal mumbo jumbo, all that paperwork. You know how much paperwork that is? You know how much re And you keep losing. Keep losing. Three times. Your legal team. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live.